After an incredible opening, the NASCAR 2023 season is back on pace. The NASCAR Cup Series will return at Phoenix Raceway this weekend with a different regulations package than what was in place for the season finale at the One Mile Desert Racing Track in November. You may be wondering what fresh changes NASCAR will debut this season and what surprises fans will receive. Well, for that, you'll have to be with us until the end. But before that, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more whereabouts on NASCAR. This week, stock cars with 670 horsepower are coming back to the Valley of the Sun. On Sunday, the world's fastest West Coast road trip comes to an end. At the beginning of NASCAR's diamond anniversary season, the best drivers in the sport will make their first visit to Phoenix Raceway, which is renowned for its intense competition and is likely to feature a shootout. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won the Daytona 500, which is where our story begins. From there, NASCAR's Western Tour got off to a good start in Fontana, California, when Kyle Busch won his first race with Richard Childress Racing in the last race at Auto Club Speedway. Then, on the previous Sunday, William Byron took Las Vegas by storm, crushing all of the other competitors. This week, fans and people who work in the NASCAR industry must be excited about the unknowns that come with change at the site of the championship weekend. In Phoenix, there has been for some time a heightened emphasis placed on execution and acquiring data. Nevertheless, in 2023, with the launch of a brand new aerodynamics package, this will become even more critical. In January, during a test session at the One Mile Track, a limited group of drivers tried several modifications in an effort to help the sanctioning body come to a decision. In 2023, a new set of rules will be used for short tracks and road courses. The spoiler will be cut from 4 inches to 2 inches, and many parts of the undercarriage of the 7th generation stock car will be taken away, which is expected to make 30% less downforce. Christopher Bell, who drives the number 20 Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota, said, I think it will be a really good change. We tested three or four different sets of rules at Phoenix in January, and the set we are using now is a lot better in traffic. We want to be able to pass other cars, and I think the fans want the same thing. Most of the time, the cars will move around a bit more. When we took the car's spoiler off, I think most of us were pretty loose. But once the crew chief started working on the car, I think it could go either way. No matter what, you'll have a lot more trouble holding on than you did before. To put it another way, spectators should expect to see much closer racing as compared to the spread out, monotonous single file racing that has been the norm at Phoenix in recent years. Not only that, but it will get harder to drive these cars, which should make for a great show. Another thing that drivers should have their hands full with as is customarily the case at Phoenix, is a restart zone that is 50% larger than it was before. In California, nine cars crashed as they were getting ready to start racing again, so we got a taste of what this learning curve might look like. This is of greatest priority due to the fact that Auto Club Speedway, like Phoenix, is known for having restarts that are unpredictable and can involve drivers spreading out as much as four wide. Joey Logano, the defending champion and winner of the most recent race held in Arizona, was in the thick of the chaos that erupted in California. Even he has his doubts about how this will affect the race that will take place on Sunday. Logano said, Man, there are already crazy restarts in Phoenix. Where the restart zone is, and how the three-way dogleg into turn one opens it up so much, it's tempting to go four wide right away. I don't know if the larger restart zone will make a difference, but it does give the leader a better chance of not getting put three wide. Chase Elliott, the most popular driver in the NASCAR Cup Series, will not be able to race for a few weeks because he broke his tibia while snowboarding in Colorado. This is a shocking turn of events. The 2020 champion had a three-hour surgery that went well, but no one knows when he will be back. And Chase Elliott's number 9 Chevrolet Camaro will be driven by Josh Berry again this weekend at Phoenix Raceway. Have you seen Josh Berry's performance on the previous Sunday? What are your opinions on the new next-gen driver's experience? Tell us in the comments. And yeah, if you want more NASCAR news, subscribe to our channel. This weekend in Phoenix, there will still be a lot of famous people around. On Friday, actor Frankie Muniz will continue his rookie season in the Arca Menard Series at his home track in the General Tire 150. Even though his car was damaged, the 37-year-old driver managed to finish a respectable 11th place in his first race at Daytona International Speedway. Muniz said, I'm excited to race at Phoenix. I'll always call Arizona home. So many of my friends and people from the area will be there to cheer me on, so I hope I'll do well. In addition, Bush will compete in the United Rentals 200 as part of the NASCAR Xfinity Series with Cowlick Racing. This comes two years after he made a solemn commitment to retire from the NASCAR development tier after surpassing 102 career victories in that category. 
This coming Saturday at Phoenix, Rowdy will be going for an incredible 12 wins. Every day of the race weekend will have Cup Series action. On Friday, there will be a 50-minute practice session, and on Saturday, there will be qualifying. In the United Rentals 500, which will air on Fox this coming Sunday at 12.30 p.m. local time, Logano will attempt to win consecutive races at Phoenix. The new aero package is a really optimistic thing for many people in NASCAR, including the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series winner at the March event and the Stuart Haas Racing Ford driver Chase Briscoe. According to him, I think that if there is less downforce, the cars will be closer together and the race will be better. When the tires wear out, you start to slip and slide. It just makes it tougher to win. That's both good and bad. It means that as a team, we have to be on it if you want to win. But if you can get your setup right and keep your track position, it just makes the race that much more exciting. Because of the changes, I don't think we can learn much from last year. So we'll have to see what happens when we get on the track for practice. Michael McDowell, who has been in the series before, thinks that Friday's practice will be very important. The driver of the Front Row Motorsports Ford said, because of our relationship with Ford and Ford Performance, we can share that information with some of the teams in the Ford camp. Some simulator time is coming up on Thursday, but that 50 minute practice is going to be very important. I don't want to say that you take your best guess, but you do look at the numbers you're given and try to account for everything. Hopefully you find the right balance. The good news is that we do have that practice, and the fact that we can work on it after practice is probably more important than the practice itself. What I mean by that is on a typical weekend, the cars are impounded, which means that your springs, shocks, geometry, and settings are pretty much set. However, after practice on Friday night, we'll be able to change our springs and suspension to get the most of Saturday. But above everything, don't forget that this Sunday, St. James will set the pace. Lynn St. James, a trailblazer who was the first woman to win Indy 500 Rookie of the Year, will serve as an honorary pace driver prior to Sunday's race. A driver who has competed in seven previous Indianapolis 500s, as well as the Rolex 24 at Daytona, the 12 Hours of Sebring, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and will start at the front position of the field in a Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. St. James, who is the second of nine women to race in the Indy 500, said in a statement that it was an honor to be the honorary pace car driver at Phoenix Raceway. I hope that my presence and my story will continue to inspire women who want more chances to race in the future. That's all we've got for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Tell us what you think of the video in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more NASCAR updates. We hope to see you in the upcoming video.